We will now open it up to questions for head coach Abrahamson Henderson. Once again, if you could please raise your hand, we'll bring a microphone to you. We'll start with Pete, second row on the left. Katie, you've, uh, your program has worked so hard to get to this point to finally get that first win. Is there any concern about them being content and not <laughs> being ready for the, uh, for the next challenge? Absolutely not. Obviously, as much as you enjoy listening to them talk, I can get a feel for where they are right now. And, uh, you know, we're, we're in a, we love being the underdog. And, and if we're not the underdog, our coaches make it seem like we're the underdog all the time. Um, so they, they're, they're, they're focused right now. So they, clearly they got sleep and I didn't. But they're super focused. So it's pretty exciting to see. Mark on the left. Coach, you were beaming when Aaron was answering the question about the family kind of environment. Can you talk to us about personally your feelings about this group? Yeah, I mean, Aaron, Aaron should be our spokesperson, clearly. You know, she, she, the, her words and, how, and her wisdom and how she says things are pretty remarkable. And Amani and Reese are like, Aaron, Aaron. And I've been telling people that all year long. Like, Aaron is like the coach on the floor. And she knows what to say and she knows how to say it. She's going to be a great coach one day. Um, she just, she's just pretty awesome. So that's what I'm beaming about. Like, she's so awesome all the time, all the time. Lindsay? Um, why do you love being the underdog? And part two is there, there's being an underdog and there's coming into the dome. And, you know, you watched the game yesterday. I knew it was an underdog and it yep. go well for them. You saw what Syracuse does and how they press and run. Um, so if you love being an underdog, they're going to do one tomorrow. Uh, you seem happy about that. Uh, just, just why is that? I mean, I don't really like being the underdog. It's just um, – how do I explain it? It's it's just the way of my life, Coach Abe's life. And most kids, most teams have the same kind of um, – they mimic their coach a little bit. Um, and so life has never been easy. And I feel like I, my life has been the underdog all the time. And a lot of these kids have – their life has been the underdog their whole life. And they've some of them have come from nothing. Some of them have come from – tough situations and so that's what I mean by underdog I mean we're, we're they're fighters you know and there's so many times through the year and throughout the year there's a lot of naysayers with our program because of the name of their sh our shirts and I always try to teach them it's not that there's only five players out on the floor and if you flipped your shirt around would we be better or we be less no because it's the person inside that makes you great and so that's what we mean by underdog like we don't we don't think we're underdogs. I think that anybody and everybody else thinks we're underdogs. But because we know that, we fight to prove that we're not underdogs. Does that make sense? So it's more like that. John? And when you look at the Syracuse game mm -hmm. yesterday, I'm sure you watched a lot of tape last night. Yep. What stands out to you the most? Is it the press, the three-point shooting, Alexis Peterson? And what's kind of the key to winning the game tomorrow? Who's a, to give me Alexis Peterson's number, I don't know who that is. Number, Number one. one, I believe. Okay, yeah, one. good, because I don't memorize names. Um, they're press, definitely. But the, the lucky thing for us is that that's what Florida did to us, too. So we're kind of prepared for that. We adjusted better in the second half. Um, so we'll be prepared for that today. We're going to work on it today. And obviously, they woo, they live and die by the three. I mean, they shoot that up, and they shoot it. And, you know, and then I'm going to find a positive out of that, too. That's what our league does. Everybody shoots the three. We are the only team in the conference that does not live and die by the three. We don't, and everybody in our league does. And so we're used to guarding, and we're used to guarding phenomenal sets to get threes off. And, and they don't have – I mean, I'm, I'm not giving them a negative, but they, uh, we know where they are on the floor all the time. I mean, so many of our teams in our league run so many trick plays and – all kinds of cool stuff to get threes off. Um, so in watching film and watching their sets and watching what they do against zone, which a lot of teams in their league didn't play them zone because they're afraid of their three-point shot, um, we're going to play – we're obviously not afraid of that because we, we, we go against it every single day, every single game we play in our conference. Pete, second row on the left. Katie, your first season at Albany, uh, you played Syracuse, I think it was about the seventh or eighth game of the season. And yep. you got beat. What do you remember about that game? And is there any desire maybe to uh, try to uh, play in the future in the Warriors? 
no, that was so long ago, and they paid us a lot of money to come here. So uh, I can't even remember. It was our first year, I think. Um, yeah, we were just learning. We were just learning style. We were just learning um, just everything, you know, learning what our coaching staff wanted from our team. And um, so it was just a whole different whole different team back then. But we, obviously, I, I asked Erin that. I said, did we play here your freshman year? I can't remember. And she said, no, coach, we didn't play. But Monty's like, I remember that game because I came and watched or something. But that's about as far as it went. In the back on the right. Uh, coach, Abe, when you took this job, when you got this job six years ago, was it stuff like this that you were envisioning, you know, a win away from a Sweet 16, you know, conference champion? Was this what you envisioned when you first got this job? Mm. Um, I don't, I don't know the answer, but I just know that when I took the job, I thought it was exciting because it was just the only way we could go was up. That's, that is the only way we could go. And, and, um, I've been so, I've been a part of so many rebuilding programs and I've learned from so many hall of fame coaches and great coaches and, and, um, you know, Andy Landers and Bill Fenley at Iowa State, we re rebuilt that program at Iowa State. And then I went to Maine and rebuilt it with Joanne. And then I went to Michigan State and rebuilt the program with Joanne. And then, you know, so I've been at so many places that we had to rebuild the program. Um, and so that, that's all I knew. I don't, I didn't know anything else. And so I was just going to do it the way I knew how to do it and just try to rebuild it day by day, piece by piece, not envisioning the ending point, but just the day by day empowering young women you know, getting them to believe in themselves. I mean, it's it's more tough love. It's not like, you know, like teddy bear love stuff. It's more like I'm the, you know, the dad of the family, and it's tough love, you know, and, and but also wanting them to do it for them. I, to be honest now, I don't. Aaron and Reese do so much for this program. It's crazy. They They run this machine, and I just sometimes stand at practice and say, what am I doing out here? Like, I don't know what I'm doing, but clearly they're going to run the practice today. I do the drills. I set up the plays. I, you know, like I, I get the practice schedule done and I do everything that, but the, but getting each other ready and focusing and, and they're, they're doing it right now. They're getting everybody ready in the locker room. We don't even have to be there. The coaches don't even have to do that anymore. It's really cool. In my first year here, I had to do everything. I had to change mentalities. I had to change a you know, the, the philosophy of how they thought, how the players thought, um, had to t turn into it's okay to lose. So we're, we're, it's not okay to lose that mentality. Um, we just lose here. Uh, uh, no, we don't, we're not, we're not, we don't just lose here. We're not going to just lose. We're not going to go through life just thinking we're just going to lose in every situation we go into. So it was just changing the mentality more so than X and O's, to be honest. Lindsay? Syracuse to try to play the way they played against Army against you? Do you feel with their length and their speed? Because Coach McGurney said, you know, we were ready, but we never see anything like that. So yep. do you feel Syracuse can do the <clears throat> Army, or do you – do you welcome them trying trying to do that and have something ready for that? Well, first of all, nobody ever wants to get pressed. So that's – I don't want to get pressed. I just said – I meant that we're fortunate that that's what – Florida did because now we're prepared for it. If, if we played a team that was a half court team and never pressed, then to, to, tomorrow going into the game, it'd be like, whoa, you know? So that's what I meant by that. Um, obviously, they're a great team and they're going to, they're, they're very long and very athletic. And, you know, obviously we press too. So as a basketball coach, when your team presses and if you're a pressing team, you, you've been pressing other people so you know how the other team breaks you down. And so it's, it's easier if you're a pressing team to be able to go against a pressing team. So it's easier if you're a zone team to go against a zone team. If you're not a zone team, it's hard to, it's hard to you know, the pieces aren't, aren't the same. So, you know, do we want to be pressed? Absolutely not. I don't think anybody ever wants to be pressed. Everybody just wants to dribble the ball up the floor and run fancy plays, you know. Um, I know they're good. I know they can press. I, I, I've seen it on tape enough. So, obviously, we just got to be ready for it. And, obviously, Florida helped us a little bit. Mark, front row on the left. Um, were you made aware that Florida was given an extra point yesterday? And what were your thoughts on that? Yeah, I, I, obviously I knew. But obviously, uh, I don't really have any thoughts. 
Other questions for Coach? Paul? Coach, when you look at Syracuse, who might be the one player you say if we shut them down, we're going to have to <laughs> Butler, number 13. My goodness. And one, th those two make everything go, I think, offensively. She's good. 13 is really good. Any other questions for Coach? In the back on the left. This might be crazy, but the fact that Sharisha really only played 22 minutes yesterday, uh, you guys were able to overcome that, but Florida didn't get to see a whole lot of her. Uh, not Florida, Syracuse didn't get to see a whole yeah. lot of her out on the court. Could that help you at all? I mean, I know you say in film, everyone knows who she is, but they still didn't really get to see a whole ton of what she can really do. Um, no, because nowadays we have Synergy. Back in the days, 15 years ago, in the VHSs, maybe. <laughs> but the only thing that benefits us is that Sh I said, was kind of joking in the car with Sharisa coming over, and I asked Aaron and Imani how their legs feel, and of course Aaron's sunshine pusher. I, we feel great, Coach, you know. And I was like, good, Reese, you should be, like, jumping out of the gym tomorrow because you only played 20 minutes. And she was like, ooh, you know. So that's the benefit, that she she's going to be nice and fresh going into the game. That's probably it um, because they're going to press us. So it doesn't really matter in the half court where Sharisa is, but she's going to have fresh legs. We have time for one final question. Mark in the front. How do you, um, I assume she's not going to foul out tomorrow, but how do you, uh, how, do you keep her from, how do you keep her from getting in foul trouble by, by not diminishing her aggressiveness, especially on the defensive end? She, she gets it. Not, she gets it. She knew a couple of those that she shouldn't have gone for. You know, the one on the foul line where she, I'm like, well, this is, get off the foul line. Like, if you can't just hold back for a second, you know. And she knows. I mean, all year long, that is the goal of every single team that we play to get Sharisa in foul trouble, to fall down when she's around her, you know. So she knows. She knows. She was just so geeked up, you know. She was had those two fouls, and she's like, put me back in. I won't foul again. I'm like, okay. You know, really? So, and then I'm thinking, oh, is she going to, is, oh, you know, that she just, you can't hold her back. She's just like a cannon, you know, she's just going to go for everything and be super, super aggressive. And that's the great thing about her. So, you know, I can't even imagine she's going to, I can't even imagine she's going to be out there. She, she won't do that again to her team. She learns her lessons pretty quickly. All right, coach. That's all the time we have. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much and good luck tomorrow. Thanks.